Hi everyone. Give everyone a second. Hi. Wait for it, guys. Wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to post it. I'm trying to pin it. Here we go. Hi. Hi now. Hi, Mom. Okay. Hi, everybody. I feel like enough people are on here. Oh, I can see at the top. I don't know how to work this. Hi, I am Michael Jackson Jr. I am from New Orleans, Louisiana, by way of Washington, D.C., and I am in my ninth season with the company. Welcome all over the world to Conversations With. Um, during this difficult time, we are trying to ensure that everyone who are supporters of Ailey get to still see Ailey. We have made it a priority to continue classes with the Ailey School and the Ailey Extension, present rep online from our, from our extensive archives, and much more. To remain updated on all of Ailey's future online events, please be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And of course, alvinailey.org slash alleyallaccess and alleyextension.com slash keepdancing. I tried to pin it down. I'm going to try it a little bit later, but, you know, it's live. So here we are. Um, during these conversations, which I'm really excited about, we are really all excited to do this. Um, you'll get a chance to ask your burning questions to the Alvin Ailey stars. Hear their thoughts on dance and health and the pandemic, but more importantly, their wisdom gained from life. Trials and tribulations, triumphs and tears on the stage and off the stage. Again, welcome to Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater's Conversations with Samantha Figgins. Now, for those of you who don't know Samantha Figgins, I have her bio right here. I'm going to read it off. It's from... Um, It's from the Ailey website. Um, Samantha Figgins began dancing at Duke Ellington School of the Arts under the tutelage of Charles Augins and Sandra Fortune Green and attended summer intensives at Dance Theater of Harlem under the direction of Arthur Mitchell. She continued her education at SUNY Purchase Conservatory of Dance. There she performed works by George Balanchine, Bill T. Jones, Paul Taylor, and Twyla Tharp. Upon graduating, cum laude, Ms. Figgins became a member of Complexion's Contemporary Ballet, performing works by Dwight Roden and Camille A. Brown. She also performed at the 2014 Dance Open Festival in St. Petersburg, Russia. Ms. Figgins was featured both on the cover of Dance, Ma Dance Spirit magazine and in Point magazine's 10 Careers to Watch in 2013. She has worked with Beyonce and can be seen in the film Enemy Within alongside Tyler Peck and Matthew Rushing. Ms. Figgins joined the company in 2014. That's a really good bio, Sam. Are y'all ready to call her? Let's call her. Let's see if we can add her on here. I know y'all are tired of seeing me already. Uh, let's see. Mm-hmm. There she is. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> you look great. How are you? I'm good. I'm up. 
Sad. What have you been doing? What have you been doing since we've been home during this pandemic? What have you been doing? <sighs> since this pandemic, I've been coming into myself and <laughs> mm -hmm. just using my time to rest, relax, restore. Um, mm -hmm. And just, yeah, I, I'm a homebody in general. So I've just been in the house, you know, cooking, redecorating, rearranging. Yeah. Stuff like that. I take class with Ailey and, you know, I'm always up on Instagram, watching mm. everybody's dance stuff, TikToks. Mm. <laughs> TikToks are crazy right now. So yeah, no, the TikToks are intense. Shout out constant. Um, right. So, <laughs> well, so yeah, yeah, that's what I've just been doing. I've been reading a lot. I've been, you know, calling my family, chilling with my family, um, playing with my puppy, taking walks and stuff. So yeah, I've just been relaxing. Yeah, <laughs> well, this, OK, so Get ready to talk with me. Are you ready to talk with me? Yeah, of course. Okay, good. We well, time, right? I know. We talk all the time. Um, well, so this is how it's going to go. We're going to do question, my questions first. Um, and then at maybe like the, the, the last 30 minutes or the second 30 minutes, we'll do questions from our viewers. Mm -hmm. And to our viewers, if you have questions, post them in the comment box or you can send them to me and I will try my best to get to all of them. But mm. ask, we'll ask, see. Ask. We'll see, yeah, ask, ask. Think of them now. That's why we're kind of talking first so you can have a chance to think of your questions and get some mm, really good really ones. Good. Yeah, I'm only <laughs> choosing the best ones, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, you ready to get started? You want your first question, my first question? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I know you um, attended Duke Ellington School of the Arts like I. Oh. Um, and, but I know that's not where you started your dance training. So what, where did you start? What was your, how did you find dance? Well, I started dancing just naturally. It's just what, you know, what I like to do. Um, mm -hmm. but my older sister went to Johns Haywood School of Dance in DC. So I started there with Jones, um, with Miss Haywood, Miss Jones and the basement of a garage or in the basement of a house, excuse me. Mm -hmm. and it was just hardcore training when I was like three, like four or five. It was just, you know, when we were younger, just hot studios, just Russian training. It was just crazy. So I started there and then um, I also went to Dance Institute of Washington in DC. Um, mm -hmm. And then with Fabian Barnes, who was also in DTH. So I, have, I was just always around dancing in Harlem in a way. Yeah. When I was younger. Um, so then going to uh, Duke Ellington and then going to the Dance in Harlem residency uh, at the Kennedy Center when I was younger. Yeah, I was just, that was where I wanted to go. You know, I, those are the dancers that I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to be like. So yeah, so I did at Duke Ellington at Jones Haywood School of Ballet. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was, I mean, and like you say, I mean, I've seen it already. A couple of people have said Figgins Legacy, Figgins Tribe. You are not the only dancer in your family. You no. grew up, well, just, I don't want to spoil it. So just, can you tell me a little bit about growing up in your well, life? In my life, yeah. So I'm a daughter, a sister with three other amazing sisters. Mm -hmm. um, my older sister, Dion, a lot of you guys know. Um, she she wanted to be a dancer when I was younger. And so I was seeing her go out to the world. She was in Dance of the Harlem and I saw her training and everything um, she had to go through just trying to get to where she wanted to be. Um, and so, yeah, seeing her go to BTH and things, I knew that that was a possibility for me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I also just had my twin sister. So me and Janelle were just always dancing and, you know, being happy, making up dances and just being wild <laughs> young ones. So yeah, I mean, and then my other sister Selena, she was more actually into visual arts. I have a very artsy family. Yeah, so I was trying was not to say that, but that's what it is. No, it's like <laughs> super artsy. Um, my mom, she's a seamstress. She's really good at sewing and things. Um, and then my mm. aunt Cynthia, yeah, she's a visual artist. So art and just my mother loves music. Just growing up in D.C. is just a big music city. So there was just so many, so much inspiration around me all the time. So, yeah. Yeah. That's where I kind of just like got a bug to dance. And of course, like me and Janelle were so 
active and my mom says spirited so mm -hmm. <laughs> she had a lot of energy so she was just like let me put them in ballet let me let their energy go somewhere else <laughs> like but, it, but she didn't realize how it would give us discipline and all these mm, other all things, the good things yeah over into other areas of our lives so yeah basically wow i remember seeing y'all for the first i remember seeing you and janelle because Jan what does janelle dance Janelle is at Aspen, Santa Aspen, Aspen, right. I remember seeing her, both of you, in high school, and y'all just seemed so much more advanced than all of the other kids, <laughs> <laughs> including myself. I'm like, how do they know how to dance on point? And they yeah, I mean, because Dion, Dion would leave her point shoes at home. She would leave us her old dead point shoes and um, <laughs> guitars and stuff like that. So we were always just not knowing what we're doing. Whoa. Like, Whoa, playing. play time. Just playing. Yeah. We're actually working. Yeah. So. Well, af so after so after Duke, you went to college at SUNY, right? Mm hmm And then after SUNY, you got into Complexions. Yes. Which I'm sure was uh, an amazing time there. But yeah, after yeah. you did that, yeah. Uh-huh. No, after I said that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. After I know it's almost a lag. After you did that though, you came to Italy. What what was the difference? Was there a big difference between complexions and coming to Italy? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, so? it was a huge difference, and I'm, I mean, I'm also just in general grateful that I went to SUNY Purchase because from um, from Ellington, I was like such a bun, like a bun head. And mm. but I knew I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to move. <laughs> and so just going to purchase uh allowed me to see so many other dance styles, um uh get exposed to like European choreographers and things mm -hmm. and for my voice more. So um I knew that I just wanted to move in general. So going to complexions after that was amazing. But then like Ailey was just a whole other beast, you know, like I feel like Dwight and Desmond really groomed me to, you know, mm. into the artist that I am. They're like so hands-on. It's like coaching, 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 coaching. It's really crazy. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I felt prepared to go to Ailey, but I had this thing in my mind that, you know, I didn't go through any of the schools. Like I didn't go to the Ailey school, or the Ailey uh, I didn't mm -hmm. do that. I was exposed to the company when I was younger, but I had like a one-track mind. Um, and so doing the film and working with Matthew Rushing and I feel like Matthew is like the heart and soul and spirit of what yeah. it really is. He like literally carries it wherever he goes. So like having time and bonding with him on the film Enemy Within was just really like, okay, I think I like his spirit. I like, you know, mm -hmm. the spirit that is carried with the alien name. Um, and so, yeah, I just, something in me just, you know, pushed me that way. But coming to Ailey, it, yeah, it was really hard. I, like, had to, you know, I have this idea that, you know, there's these fierce Ailey women and they're, like, strong. And, you know, everybody knows what the, like, the Ailey aesthetic is. And so I was mm -hmm. like, how do I fit into that? Like, how, who, how do I come into the company and, and like, you know, be that ferocious? Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so I really, like, had to start over for myself. I, like, went to the beginning. I started over. I'm like, I need to learn the big. Of course, it's important, and I have the training, of course. But I don't know. It's just Ailey's style. It's the style. It's oh. the chest. I need to, you know, live with that and figure out yeah. what that meant. And not figure out what, mm, not figure out how to look like an alien woman, but how to be myself. Mm -hmm. How to bring the sh my, my strength through. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, yeah. It was a lot of that. You know, um, I just, I have so many things. I think just so many little like insecurities and blah, 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 blah that I had to like really work through. So yeah, yeah. those were like the majority well, of that was, This was a lot of like my mind, my mental things. Yeah. Well, that's like kind of a perfect segue into my next question because you're in your seventh 
season now. So we would hope or you would hope that the things that you struggled with, you are better at and, you know, you have gotten better with time Mm -hmm. and learning and being a part of the organization. My question is, though, what has been the most fulfilling and the most challenging part of being in Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater? Most fulfilling, most challenging. I feel fulfilled in so many areas of my life mm-hmm. at Ailey. I really do. I'm very happy there. Um, and I think I have a family, like the the women in the company, the men, how we interact with each other. I haven't really, I mean, I've experienced, but it's just something closer. I, um, I honor <laughs> just the fact that we dance with purpose. Like it's it's a space for us um, to, like we always say, bring our human experiences. But I can literally show up with my life and show you that there I am, mm-hmm. and that my life story is appreciated and wanted in the room. Um, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's only going to make the work that we have in our rep more enriching and more full you know um, mm-hmm. because we have such like a like a, a classic rep we have so, so much classical rep with uh mr ailey's works and then you know the new modern works and yeah just ha- how we get to step into that and how we get to show ourselves is something that is really fulfilling for me there at ailey yeah let's see my challenges I, yeah come on that's what i'm waiting for i'm trying to see that challenge because i've I mean, I, I know that we all, hello, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know that we all deal with so many challenges as dancers that are unspoken, but because we are performers, it is our job to perform. So it's always interesting to me, especially here at Ailey, because it's such a big company and I I, you know, I've known you since you were a little girl. So <laughs> I, it's, I, I, I definitely want to know what you see as a challenge for yourself that, that a part, that's a big part of being here. Yeah, for you. definitely. I think just in general for me, I think everybody knows that I talk about this. Um, but just my, just dealing with my hearing and creating a process for myself at Ailey that, um, that is, uh compassionate and loving you know what i mean um and i just like especially during this time during the pandemic i've just had a lot of time to uh really reflect on my hearing journey and how that has uh how i have shown up in my workspaces Mm -hmm. and i didn't realize that a lot of my um trials and tribulations were due to <laughs> for real were, like directly rooted to my hearing it's like i was like um i just didn't acknowledge my hearing problems and so yeah all the anxiety insecurities comparing myself which is something that happens out of being a twin also mm-hmm. the comparison and um Knowing how to just like show up and be honest like authenticity i mm-hmm. think has been a challenge for me just because I try so hard not to um, let my struggle known sometimes just it, with me accepting my hearing loss, you know? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it was just like a lot of cover up sometimes. And so I've been able to <sighs> let that yeah. go now. And yeah. I well, that's great. I, that's great. That's great. That's kind of great. Yeah, that's great that you have been honest about that. Like, do you has that have has your honesty about your open honesty about it? Has it opened up any more doors? Are you participating with any other groups when it comes to deaf yeah. community? Yeah, absolutely. And I I think what is amazing for anything that you know, people might be struggling with their own personal, like, obstacles are just, like, just spaces and opportunities for you, me, (laughs) to 
grow. And so I mean, mm -hmm. like, my hearing and like all the anxieties and stuff, blah, 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 blah. I was able to um, understand that it's not a loss. It's just, it's not a loss. I, it's, I, I don't, I'm, I'm enough. I'm full, right? And so mm -hmm. that allows me to share and have a relationship with a whole group of people that I didn't even, you know, open myself up to. Which is the definition Before, yeah. of people with uh, hearing loss. So I've been taking ASL classes in my um, off time during this pandemic. Oh, the, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> at the Sign Language Center so I could speak with my hands and communicate. Yay. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, just meeting a lot and actually like having Zoom talks with um, no voices and um, just communicating oh. in that way has been very exposing and, but just, enriching i'm just gaining new friends and gaining a new community that i can share my art with and share my life with you know yeah, yeah. that's amazing i um you <laughs> it's definitely inspired me you being honest about what you've been going through i think that there is an honesty off of the stage that dancers don't really feel strong to portray and one of the things I remember, one of my, I think, I feel like Mr. Augins told me this. You're going to like not believe this, but I feel like Mr. Augins told me this. Like being okay with, well, you being truthful is helping other people, you know? Yeah. And when I was younger, I definitely didn't feel that, you know, we, that was not on my brain yeah, at all. I didn't that one. But <laughs> as a, yeah, and as an adult and being a part of Al Alvin Ailey, because we are such a big company and we, so many people get to see us. It's nice. It's really nice to know that the person standing next to me isn't perfect. I mean, your mm -hmm. face is beautifully beat right now, but I know that you have flaws too. <laughs> that you have flaws too. <laughs> but um, my okay. Next question. You ready for the next one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, when when the pandemic hit. Um, this is a little more serious. When the pandemic hit, we were in the middle of tour. We had just gotten to Dallas or something, and we were immediately Stay home. <laughs> kicked, right, kicked back to New York City. Um, and all I remember feeling is a little bit of relief because there was so much dancing still to do, but scared um how did you feel like what was that experience like for you like leaving tour and coming back home honestly mm -mm. we were torn torn touring and i was watching the news <laughs> was like, the whole time can we go home mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. only because i i i think the whole transition going back home after tours um finished and the whole pandemic started i feel like in this whole time, I think I just really have this weird sense of like calm and just like faith, knowing that like we're all gonna be all right on the other end of it. And I honestly feel like things like this, times of struggle, things that don't feel good sometimes are necessary for in are sometimes sent for us to explore different parts of ourselves. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I feel like we all we all were saying, let's go back to normal. Let's get back to normal. But maybe that wasn't a norm but maybe that wasn't a good normal for us to be in. So I think this time has really been like a a, a chance to wash away. <laughs> mm-hmm. Agree. Wash away I all agree. the work in general, in your, in, in my own life. I'm doing, the, I'm doing that work during this time. And yeah, I just feel like this is a, these moments of stillness are where we, we find clarity. Mm -hmm. And what, and, and even though like the government is like, <laughs> even though the government is like really trying to confuse us. Yeah. Um, with yeah. this confusion, God does not exist. So I don't, I just, I just am in an accepting place, you know what I mean? So that I can get whatever I am supposed to be getting during this time. 
sent yeah. back to me with clarity. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So like, I, feel, yeah. I feel like we are all going to be all right. I feel like thoughts and prayers are always being sent out. And I just, yeah, I just, there's an acceptance that needs to to be in the bosom so that you can find your peace. Come on, bosom. So all right. Really. Rock of my soul. Really. <laughs> really. Abraham, you just need to accept the stillness. Well, in in that stillness, I feel like <laughs> the dance world has kind of um, simultaneously. I, can't keep up. I know, I know. We are all. Everyone's on Instagram. Um, I feel like our art form is taking this is like taking this unknown journey right now of moving forward because we don't know what the future looks like. Mm -hmm. And I have my opinions, but this is not my interview. <laughs> Well, what do you feel about dance online, dance on Instagram? What do you feel about? I mean, how you, what are your feelings? I think it's amazing. I think mm -hmm. that more now than ever, people have access to the arts, and the arts are what is holding everyone together during this pandemic. We all mm -hmm. turn to the arts to make us feel whatever we're feeling you know mm -hmm. so i think it is amazing i think that this is this is a part of the new normal i think we are mm -hmm. living in a virtual space now we were already on the way there like our this generation is more prepared for something like this because we have the technology and things like that so um yeah i, I think it's great i have been really inspired i feel like I'm in school again, honestly, because I can wake, like, honestly, I remember in college just being on the internet, watching dance videos, like, all night long, and so, and being at Ailey, we work so much, we're in the studio dancing ourselves, but I get to um, see other people and other companies dancing and other, yeah, just other perspectives, and then also, it's, a, it's a, an opportunity to capture dance and transform it into an a whole new space. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just, I'm just curious about how live performances are going to go. I am. Yeah. Yeah. I miss the stage and, and engaging and having that conversation with the audience and feeling the energy. You know, mm -hmm. so I really miss that. I hope that we figure out how to do that coming back after the pandemic. Um, so yeah, I think it's great. I think dance brings people together. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I think we are all together at home. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, on that note, I, you know, for, since you mentioned our audiences, I think that we should take some questions from the audience, but okay. from the viewers. But um, for those of you who are just tuning in, um, we are here having conversations with Samantha Figgins, who's giving us all the lowdown on her time away and her career. Um, if you want to know more, you can check the pin at the bottom. I learned how to do it. Thanks, Hope Boykin. Um, <laughs> we love Hope. Um, and you, right, right, love Hope. You can go to alvinailey.org <laughs> slash alleyallaccess and alleyextension.com slash keep dancing. So are you ready for some um, questions, some more questions, some viewer questions? I hope y'all have some good ones. OK. Let's do this. Let's do this one first. This is the first one. This is from J underscore Gilmer. I don't know who that is, but do you? <laughs> I do. I do. Hi, James. Um, I'm like that. Right. <laughs> Hi, James. Hi, James. Um, do you miss Dancing on Point? How does that kind of movement compare for you to the rep we do now? I miss it. I miss it. I miss it. Do you? <laughs> I, I, do. I, miss, I think I miss everything about it. Um, I feel like, of course, point dancing changes your body. I, I love that ballet point body. Um, mm -hmm. and how does it compare, movement compare for you? Yeah, I mean, like, luckily for, for me, um, because I really, in my training, try to focus on um, being as versatile as possible so that I can go into the dance world. My gram classes, I was like, you know, down in the ground, 
working through my pelvis, you know, connected to the earth. And so, but I was still always in my ballet class, you know, like I needed, I just, that's where I started. And so when I got to like complexions, it was like running in a point shoe and even like doing um, a dance in Harlem, uh, like all of Mr. Balanchine's work, it's athletic. You have to do off, like off your leg, you know, off center stuff. So um, I felt like I was a very grounded point. <laughs> Dancer, yeah. Like, yeah. I, like, I was like low key the one, <laughs> and I have the African dance on point. So, <laughs> with, Mark. remember, Doctor Mitchell. I do, I do remember that. So, mm. I feel like coming out of the point shoe was a relief. Um, you know, a spread to spread the toes, uh, but the um, I felt like I was always like grounded. So, yeah, definitely the point um, shoe for me. I can I can really feel both. Like I can feel the um, pulled up in the legs, pulled up in the hips, the levitation, the ethereal feeling, and still that's why I wanted to be contemporary. I wanted to move my body. Oh, on, well, I'm up. <laughs> do it this and move your what? Your body. My body. Well, I'm up in my pelvis. You know that's. That's what I think, James. Uh, James, you got a full answer. I hope you're happy with it. Um, let's see the next question. Oh, uh, okay. This is from Genevolent. I'm not sure who that is either. Uh, hi, Nelly. That's this hi, is Nelly. Samantha's That's sister. Uh, describe your first day at Duke Ellison School of the Arts. That's a great question. I want to know. That was so good. Well, my first day, first of all, the audition. I'll talk about the audition because I think it was your class that I came in. I was walking to the dance department and you have to walk through the cafeteria in the old Ellington building. And mm -hmm. I walk in and I'm like in the seventh grade and <laughs> I see all these seniors model walking. Like <laughs> that DC model. <laughs> that's the show. I was like, that's my audition. And so, so then the first day of school, <laughs> it was literally like fame. It was literally like fame. And it was the first day of school at Ellington. You bring all the freshmen in, I think, and then the the junior sophomores uh, come later in the day. Mm -hmm. So we had the first like. Um, before class started, we had a or, oh, a breakfast time. And so people were drumming on the tables, the lunch tables. Oh, I remember. Like beat, so and then the that, vocalists, yeah. no, honestly, the instrumentalists were drumming. The vocalists started singing over there. And then <laughs> the theater kids were doing monologues. <laughs> and then the dancers jumped <laughs> onto the stage. <laughs> ah! on the stage I mean onto the um sorry we were in high school so we just yeah it was a stage actually we had a stage in a cafeteria because it was Duke Ellington School of the Arts um and so <laughs> we jumped wow on the stage, like had a go-go session we were like jamming to like go-go music beating our feet like we are class of 2007 like making it known that we're <laughs> day one and then my cousin came and snatched me off the stage because she was a senior at the time <laughs> wow was janelle with you during this whole yeah, yeah. The whole we time y'all did not leave each other's side i know that was my writer and um, that's a great question nelly yeah that was fun that was fun Dude, you ready like, for another like, seriously like fame like it was yeah it was just really nice to go to that school in do general. you miss it don't you miss it? Do I miss it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's high school. You're I right. I miss the energy. I miss, I don't miss being in high school, but like, <laughs> I yeah. miss like the energy of Ellington nice. um, and just everything that it instilled in me, honestly. And then like, we have these conversations with Sarita every now and then um, since being in pandemic and she, hearing her talk about Mr. Ailey. And Mr. Ellington's, Duke Ellington's relationship was just so much, mm -hmm. um, it just made so much sense to me. And I just felt like, oh, I've grown up with 
the values of both of these people and just being able to bring it together at Italy. It's just, yeah, this is really important to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Those conversations with Sarita have been fantastic. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go to... Mm-hmm. Ooh, Miss Emily Grace, 1967, asks, what's after I'm... Alvin Ailey for you? <sighs> um, I don't <laughs> know. That's such a hard question because you not know. I, I'm just so happy right now at Ailey, and I could stay there. <laughs> right, okay. I could stay there. I could be a lifer, but I know that I also have a lot of love other things inside of me that I want to explore. So, mm-hmm. I mean, for, oh, but for definitely for me, I do want to be a sign language interpreter. <laughs> really? So, do you really? I absolutely do. I had I had a dream last night that I was <laughs> interpreting. Wow. I was singing a song and I was interpreting. And so, goals for me, yes. And I, I see like, that for you, sis. Goals for me is to really be an interpreter um, and just researching. It's just really important that we get more black interpreters in the, um, uh, for the deaf community, especially yeah. the black deaf community, because just how we as um, African Americans experience uh, injustice and discrimination, imagine not being able to communicate with police and not speak the same language and not be able to tell them, you know, and not hear yeah. them. Enough, you know what I mean? So yeah. there's been a lot of like um really, really tough things that I've been that, that I've been researching. Um so it, it is a goal of mine to be seriously be a, a an interpret interpreter, especially for the black community. So that's yeah. a big goal of mine. But you know, I love to sing and dance, child. So <laughs> You do. I that's that's see this is the next question. This is the next question. This is the next question. Do you, uh Marcus dot n dot Williams? Hi Marcus. Hi Marcus. Do you have any other art forms you explore regularly or want to explore besides dance? Yeah, definitely. Um I regularly explore um my voice and I think I'm, You do. Yeah, I do. I am all like it's <laughs> If you know me at Ailey, I'm always singing in a stairwell. Let me find the acoustics because <laughs> I need to check out these acoustics for um our sound guy. He needs right. to be on the mic. Um, so <laughs> I'm always singing. Uh, so that's another good thing for me to be really working on during this time is like getting vocal lessons and stuff like that. Um, and I like to. Am I an actress? Maybe. You are. You are. So, I just saw Solomon say you are a comedian, but I feel like you are just like all of the emotions on your face. Like you I can portray so all of them. Dramatic and like I know whole boy can. She's always making fun of me because I'm. I like. I cry, and so it's just a trauma. <laughs> feel. So oh. I, you know, I like to act. I like to sing. I like to write mm-hmm. in my free time. And I also, um, you know, after doing that film with Matthew Rushing, I kind of like got bit by a bug of like behind the scenes directing and stuff like that. Because, mm. you know, I did that uh, little thing for um, Donald Byrd's piece, uh, Greenwood at. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I like directing. I like a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Even like mm. at Sweet Purchase, you had to take um, technical theater classes. And that was really fun, like learning about the lights and, you know, how to run the behind the scenes. Um, so, yeah. That's a, that was great. That stuff. I used to uh, like, um, on my side like in between, you know, gigs with complexions, I used to uh, work as a stagehand doing- I did not know this. Yeah. So I like- You can do it all. I like to be all, like, let me tell you what to do. Oh, you want to give me direction? I I can do it. I'm not surprised. Vigan's tribe all day long. Um, (laughs) Let's 
go with this one. Miss um, Melanie, Melanie Pope, I believe. Hi. Hi. Uh, uh -huh. What is your favorite dance work of Ailey? At Ailey? Well, oh, it's so hard because I really do like all of them. Um, <laughs> I do. I love doing Night Creature. I feel like everybody always says Night Creature, but mm -hmm. I love doing Night Creature. I love doing the works Mr. Ailey choreographed to to Ellington's music because I get to experience my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? mm -hmm. I, like, DC is a jazz capital, so being able to dance. Jazz music, yes, Backwater Blues. Hope so. Yes, I love that. I one. just saw it too. Yeah, I love Backwater Blues too. I love it, but yeah, being able to do Mr. Ailey's, just all of Mr. Ailey's works, honestly, because yes, they were very technically hard, they were hard and challenging. Okay, challenge, <laughs> but <laughs> but all of the characters that he had and all of the um figures in his life that he um you know placed throughout his work are mm -hmm. really fun to jump into. Um, that's where you get to play with the theater part of like, you know, what you like to do with your life. Um, and I right. like to act. So yeah, I get to, you know, jump into those roles. So I love Miss Ailey's works. I also love when we do more contemporary works at Ailey. When I um, was interested in coming to the company, you know, coming from professions, I saw that Mr. Battle had, um, Y'all doing trauma, and so I was like, okay, oh, I want to do trauma. And then as what soon as I got here, trauma was out the door. Right. Time. <laughs> but having um, Wayne come and, you know, work with us, that was amazing. And that was definitely a bucket list thing for me. So I really feel at home with Mr. Ailey's works and mm -hmm. the works. So, yeah. That's, yeah, that was a great question. I feel like... I feel like it, like you said, it's so hard to choose. It's, it's really so hard. hard to choose one. And then I, I forget, I do like to Millie Rock on the beat. I like to do hip hop. I do. It, <laughs> I do. And so <gasps> it's just a blessing to be able to explore all of that. Hey, Ailey, we literally get mm -hmm. to do all of it. You know? mm -hmm. And I, it's just so hard to choose. It really is. Yeah. But. Shavar just said you slayed Cairo, so you did. You are beautiful in Cairo. See, you still got your chance. You still got your chance to get a little contemporary. Yeah. yeah. You know, I found, I was like, you know, doing spring cleaning in here, and I found some point shoes. Like, did you put them on? Did you put them I on? I have put them on, and um, yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Like, okay. I got to come back. Come back. Come back. It's all right. You got time. <laughs> Okay, let's see what else we got. Let's see. Everyone is laughing at you. What? Uh, <laughs> mm, this is, I guess, this is a great company. I mean, a great question. You, mm, is there a ballet company rep you dream performing, of performing, or joining from Sophia Dot Bernard? Hi, Sophia. Yeah, a ballet company rep dream you well of performing or joining i dream of one day performing cry you know i think that's it yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i want to do a cry and so yes i would like to <laughs> do cry one day that would be that would be kind um and oh it's so hard um it's such a hard i would like to do um Sorry, I'm having a um, brain fart, but I would like to do what? Forsyth work. Mm -hmm. I would like to do some Forsyth. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a great question, though. That was a that, that was, I feel like so they're funky. good and hard. I'm sorry, they're hard. They are hard, but I know. I'm Let's see if I challenge. can get an easy one. I love. Oh, challenge. this was good. This is a good one. Uh, what was your audition process like for getting into Good the question. company from Amina Amina dot Liddy Hi, Hi sis. That's, that's, my, sis. that's my little sister. Um, the perform. I mean, the audition process for me, it was nerve wracking in a different way. <laughs> How so? <laughs> because you know I was coming from complexions and 
I wasn't able to go to the physical audition for Haley. Uh, so I had to um, send in a video audition. And that was right after, you know, the movie with, uh, with Matthew Rushing. So yeah, I had to send in a video audition. And then I also had to uh, do an in-person class with a uh, um, Robert Battle. Um, Whoa. Then, yeah, he came and watched me take class. Um, which is fine. It was <laughs> I'm like, like I was doing good terrified over here. Like, ah. <laughs> um, and so yeah, after I gave them my video and then he saw me take class, I had to go back on tour. And you know, the weeks were going by and I hadn't heard anything. So I was like a little like discouraged, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah. Call me, let me know. Um, and so, but, you know, with that, I was like, if they don't call me, they don't call me. I tried. I put my energy over there. I want to be in the company. If they want me, they want me. I need to continue. <laughs> to do you, on yeah. On my way. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, and then I got to St. Petersburg, Russia, and my friend, Akua, called me. It's like, you need to call so-and-so, Robert Battle. <laughs> <laughs> you need to call. You need to call Robert Battle. That was um, the best advice she could have given. Yeah, I was in St. Petersburg and I was talking to um, Robert Battle and he said, Welcome to the company. And I said, Oh my God. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I love having you here. I love having you. I love having you here. You are such a little baby. I feel like every time you, I know, but I cannot see that. I cannot. I'm a child of God. (sighs) Come on. And on that note, let's take one more. I think we have time for one or two more. Now, you can't see the questions that I see. I get to decide. Okay. Oh, let's, since we, this is from only upward. Mm -hmm. Having access to a second, second language, do you find it easier? to express yourself. That's our lovely cool. So. I think I think I do find it easier to express myself. Um, one because just in general I think whenever I'm giving an interview or the interview is always like you're so I wish this was a video interview because mm. I do not talk with my body. You do. Them. You do. Um, and so now I have like sign language to support that. Um, and then also, yeah, I think with, especially with ASL in, in the deaf community, they're very direct. So you have to be very clear about what you're saying, and, you know, your tone. Or, mm. And so I think that has helped me with, you know, just speaking and being more direct. <laughs> like just mm-hmm. more straight to the point to, you know, getting across my point, you know. Um, but so yeah. And then I also think that it also gives me more to work with, with, you know, dancing, doing ASL. Because ASL is all about, like, creating the story in front of you. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And so, yeah, I think it supports all of that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, our next one, maybe our last one. This is from, from Inkawa. You are so focused on stage. Do you feel the love of the audience while you were dancing? I do. <laughs> That's such a thing. I tried to give you oh, a nice I one. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> I do. I do. Yes, of course. I, I mean, yeah, I do feel. Yes, I feel the love of the audience. I always do. I not, and like even when I'm on stage, I like try to just take a deep breath in and out. Because I think I focus a lot because of my hearing. So I, yeah. I do have to focus. And so yeah. Yeah, I do notice that myself. And so when I feel like I'm like ah, crazy, I do have to like take a breath in and out and just remember and be present and remember where I am and why I am here. Mm-hmm. What is like, what's the energy working through me? What's the, yeah, what's the reason? You know what I mean? Um, but I like, it, you know, and this is just a lifelong journey for me in general with my hearing. I just, you know, there's so many things that come along with this that, <clears throat> yeah, I, I do have, I do think it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. To. So, yeah. 
You have to. Yeah. Thank you so much, and Carla. That mm -hmm. was a great question. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so sorry. I think that's all the time we have questions. That's all the time we have for questions. Yeah. Um, now, Sam, I, I in in preparing for this interview, I I came up a up on a couple of things. There's one, there's this interview with Mr. Ely and Donna Wood. I don't know if you've seen it. Like, I think they're at UCLA. Maybe some of the dancers or some of our viewers have seen it, but it is a great interview. They're, I think they're just like sitting on the stage. It's kind of like a post-performance oh. situation. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was really inspired by the facts. Like, they just give the facts of the company so well. And... We are constantly doing interviews, like tour is interviews and, you know, all of these things, post-performance discussions, all of these things where you have to know Alvin Ailey facts. So the last 10 minutes of this <laughs> chat, I would like to quiz you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> now... Everyone, you can play along with you, um, too. You guys can play along as well. Now, it's going to be 10 questions. You're going to have, let's say, let's give you three. Three seconds to answer each question. Three? You want four? I can do three. Okay. Right. Thank you. That's three for you guys, too. Fauna, that's three for you. Hope, that's three seconds. Now, you guys can type it. I don't know if you can type these answers in three seconds, or you can just scream them out loud in your kitchen or your living room or wherever you are. <laughs> um, now. I'm not sweating. Are you ready? I know. I know. <laughs> Father said three seconds. Five <laughs> seconds. No. Three seconds. Here we go. Okay. Now. Are you ready? Now, Sam, because of I don't want people to help you. Can you, you turn it? profile? Turn profile because you have such a beautiful profile. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you guys ready? Is everyone ready? Profile, don't look at me. Thank you. <laughs> I can't. And in five, four, three, two, one. What is the only continent to which Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater has never traveled? Alaska, Antarctica. Yes. <laughs> How many ballets did Alvin Ailey choreograph in his lifetime? Over 200. <laughs> in what year did Alvin Ailey and his dancers premiere Revelations at the 92nd Street Y in New York City? 1960. Oh, come on, Sam. <laughs> How many artistic directors has Alvin Ailey had in the company's history? Yes, three. That's free and ASL. Who said this quote? I believe that dance came from the people and that it should be delivered back to the people. Alvin Ailey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what section of Alvin Ailey's revelations features a solo male dancer? I want to be red. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At which New York dance institution did artistic director Robert Battle study? Um, Julliard. <laughs> <laughs> Which work did Alvin Ailey dedicate to Black women everywhere, especially our mothers? Cry. Cry, yes. What did President Obama award Alvin Ailey in 2014? Presidential award? Yes. Uh, it's uh, actually the Presidential Me Medal of Freedom. Medal of Freedom. Come on, yes. Ha last one. Hardest one. How many weeks does Alvin Ailey American Dance Center perform in New York City Center each year? Uh -oh. Uh, tilt or ponche? <laughs> now I see. Okay, yeah, that was great. That was great. You got all of them. I feel like you got all of them. You really did. There is, if you want, I'm not going to tell you where to take this quiz because it's my quiz now. Um, <laughs> but you did really good. That was good. Were you nervous? I was nervous. But you got but them right. I must admit. I, must. I think I have to make them harder the next time. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, so you, cho you chose Tanche or Tilt? 
I chose Panche. You did? Wow. I, on point. <laughs> you know, I like Arabes. <laughs> can you still see me? You can still see me, yeah? I see you. Mm -hmm. Well, it is. We only have five more minutes left. I feel like it went by so fast, Sam. I thought the hour did go by fast. I know. <laughs> um, I do have one last question, though. Okay. If you could give a younger dancer any advice, what would you, who was trying to be a professional dancer, what would, advice would you give them? Uh, I'd say, <clears throat> me personally, to do everything with love. And mm -hmm. I think do everything with love and to, I got this from purchase, think wide open. But, but really mm -hmm. the love part is just like, you know, you work with love, you are compassionate and loving towards yourself through any stage that you're going through, hard, triumphs, you give love to yourself. I think you give love to your teachers and you respect them. You give love to the audience. Mm. You, know, you are created from love. So the the energy and the things that you produce is another creation of love. Mm. So I think to just give back. I feel like dance, for me growing up, dance and love is just, you know, just right hand in hand and so mm -hmm. I, I say that you know treat yourself kindly trust oh well with love yeah trust that any hard time is the universe giving you tough love this mm -hmm. <laughs> this pandemic is tough tough love, love. <laughs> amen <laughs> amen it amen. is you know, I agree with that there's something for you to gain through this and something for you to gain through all your trials. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think <coughs> having that awareness all the time, which is something that I have to also do myself, is just, like, keeping the awareness that it is just dance and that, yeah, if you do it with love, you'll survive, child. Don't hurt yourself. Do it with love. Do it with love, <laughs> people. Samantha Don't hurt yourself. Said it. <laughs> well, I don't want you to go. I don't know, man. I'll fine. call you late. I'll call you after so we can talk about how great this was. Oh, Michael. <laughs> um, okay, well, we have I love you. Three minutes. I know. I, oh, I guess I can say my goodbye with you on the phone, with you okay. on. I am very, very happy and pleased with this conversation with Samantha Figgins. Yeah. I hope you guys had so much fun. I'm sorry that I couldn't get to all of your questions, but we are doing this every Wednesday and Saturday at 1 p.m. Conversations with. So save your questions up. Hey, Terry Sunblush. Yes. Um, and um, Crystal Hudgens was in here. Oh, D Books is in here. Oh, hey, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. We had so much fun. Um, but if you have any more questions or any comments, save them for Wednesday when you will see us again. Um, and again, I say look, and you can join us at alvinailey.org slash Ailey, all access and aileyextension.com slash keep dancing. You can look at those two links to get all of the information on upcoming events with Ailey and online things. And we love you and stay safe. Um, yes, keep stay those safe. masks on. Stay healthy. I have one yes, more thing. Stay healthy. Oh, come on. <laughs> I would also tell my younger self to look up impermanence because mm. because this moment is fleeting and even I was preparing for this I was like nervous things I get nervous for and so I have to just remember that it's just the moment just like that line in grace about the clouds passing but there's always mm. possibly a blue sky mm-hmm mm-hmm and on that note thank you Love you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you.
Bye. Love you. Love you too.